Right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We are ready. We are raring to go. We are refreshed. Amberlynn Reed is done, dusted, toasted, demonetized. Now let's move on to the other one that will undoubtedly get me demonetized as well. Smash the like button. I am talking about Foodie Beauty, who, since we last spoke about her, has changed her name. Yay. She is now the big beautiful me, minus the. Just big beautiful me. She's changed her life. She's changed her tune. We'll certainly get to all of that in a moment. First of all, I want to address a video she made shortly after seeing my video on her, because I think it's quite important we address some of the comments she makes, because it is quite amusing, bemusing, seemusing, and quite frankly, sad. I am, of course, going to be as polite as I was the first time. I don't believe Chantal, or big beautiful me, deserves as much fury, rage, callousness, as our dear favourite, Gorl. So let's get into that. Oh, a mess today. Like when I have a routine, like I was doing, going to the gym early in the morning, eating breakfast, eating my three meals, counting the calories, it was like occupying, you know, it was like I was on track. So, and now I feel like like, I don't know how to explain it. I have this sneaky feeling I'm about to be blamed for something that is entirely someone else's fault. In this context, I should now make it clear, I made a video on you because of what I saw you doing, because I believed you needed to be called out for some of the things you have done, because I do not believe you are doing anything that is best for you that isn't slowly killing you and you would surely want to live a longer, healthier, happier life. So when I made my video, well, it was certainly quite well received. Um, I can undoubtedly understand why you'd feel a little bummed out, especially if there was any facts within it that you may not have liked. Oh yeah, banter bus. I watched the Omegan, it's Omegon video. So there. <laughs> yes, you even slapped a couple comments on it. It's just a shame that when I replied to you by being polite and you asked why I was being polite to you, you deleted your comment. But I do have the first one. Senpai noticed me. Yes. I can fap in peace. Don't let negative vibes affect your whole day. It's not even just negative vibes. It's just, well, it's just like, I don't know. So much going on in my brain and... Well, I will concede at this point. During this video, you do talk about things you are currently doing with the help of those professionals. We'll certainly get to what happened in the aftermath. There's a reason I waited as long to make the second video, and it was to test your conviction because of what you say in this video. It had nothing to do with the fact that I totally forgot you existed. How was it? Oh, I said earlier, the video, it's just, I mean, it's the same as always. It says all the other videos. I mean, like I said, like pointing out my cringy moments, moments when I was a total bitch and, uh, you know, my, talking about my 850 diets. And there I was thinking I was at least a tad unique by using an avatar, or perhaps by being a lot nicer than those like Michael B. Petty and Zachary Michael, who are funny, but also have that snark, which I don't normally possess. And I'd like to say 850, that being a bit charitable, it's at least 853 now. Um... Yeah. You know, I mean, what do you want me to say? I want you to say that you loved it. I want you to say you loved every moment of my voice, chastising your poor decisions. I'm just like in one of those I don't care moods today. By the very fact that you even made this video, I have one word to answer that with. Doubt. Now, I don't feel like his, vid his video was like really negative. I just feel like it was like, like, like he was asked to do it. So I'm like, I'm a, a pretty people must really, you know, like, um, yeah, I don't feel it was like negative. I feel like it's like, like more trying to be, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. In truth, nor do I. I'm a tad disappointed here. I have no idea what half of what you said meant. It sounded like gibberish. I could play it back, but I'm pretty sure it's still gibberish. Let's play it back and see if we can decipher it. 
people must really you know like nope I'm slightly deflated. Yes, I was asked to make a video on you. And I, being the gentleman that I am, felt that you were worthy of the time once I absorbed enough of your content to realise that you were behaving in a way that was kind of contradictory to what you believed your message was. Or what you were trying to achieve. Like funny, but also, uh, you know. <laughs> it's hard to, like adjust to I'm just like I guess if I'm honest I'm just like one of those people that hates criticism like I really do I know that's bad I guess I just hate being talked about <laughs> but like that's so like it's kind of dumb because at the same time I'm like I have thousands of subscribers like what did I think would happen right actually one's desire to not be on the receiving end of criticism is quite normal the problem you have is why the criticism happens. For you it happens because you say something and then do something that contradicts it. You start a diet and then within three days you have already quit it because you have copyright struck people defiling the very fair use rules people use by making a mockery of it because you can't handle the criticism. I, in my time on YouTube in four years, have received seven response videos. I conceded on two of them because they were good points, and the other five I responded directly to. Perhaps if you took the time to make an informed response to those people, perhaps you might feel a little more catharsis from it. Although, based on some of the attacks you receive or criticisms you receive, I don't believe you would win those particular bouts short of going on a version of a kumite except Kumite no longer exists. And I say this because, unless you have a natural intelligence aimed in the direction of throwing down with others in a live setting, I don't believe you could actually win those response videos if you tried, but I think more would respect you if you had a go. I'm merely offering a solution here. Now in truth, I expected more from this response. I thought perhaps you might say a little more in my direction about what I said in the video, but you did fob it off as simply, you've heard it all before. But I don't think you have. It is very rare you hear from somebody taking a measured approach. I don't like the word based, it's kind of lame. I prefer the word measured, because I'm taking my time and giving you due consideration. I'm not rushing into an answer. There were two segments I left out of the first video, and they, along with what you have done since this video, are going to make up what the remainder of this video is because you've done some things afterwards that are quite unfortunate, but you've also done some things that are quite amusing. And I'm not going to mock you in a way I did Amber in my third video on her. I'm going to give you a measured response because that's what I do, and I think it is respectful. So, let us now dive into what you've been doing since the last video, and once we have done that, we will then address your relationship with Bebe and your ex for that matter. And one other thing that I'm going to leave until the end. Right, so what we're going to do here, we are going to go through a brief timeline of everything that has transpired since March the 7th, 2019, which was when I made my first video on Chantal. On the 8th of March, she released a kind of response. She addressed my video courtesy of Banter Bus in a stream called breakfast, where she indicated she was seeing a doctor, a dietitian, a psychiatrist, and working with them to formulate a proper plan for her. Barf and poop at the same time because you're like really sick. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe I shouldn't share that with people, but whatever. Now, she naturally gave up on this within three days as it was too hard, which I have to say, anything that is easy to get isn't really worth having because it isn't the best you can get which requires a little hard work. After this, after quitting, after basically just carrying on as if nothing happened, that's actually no, that's what she did. She just carried on making her regular content. The odd vlog in the gym, a couple food videos cooking and or eating, and some streams, maybe for those precious super chats. I've never bothered to stick around long enough to find out if she gets one. After continuing as if nothing happened for a short while, Chantel had a brief health scare. Just update you guys, I went to see my doctor today. 
um, and my GP, and I had my blood t my blood test result. I feel out of it right now, guys. I'm so sorry. I saw my GP. My blood test results are not good. My A1C went up. It's 6.1, so I am in the pre-diabetic range. Had to change your antidepressant. Had to change your medication. He put me on Lexapro. <laughs> Not sure if she's like AL in the sense she may or may not be taking them as she should be, but I figure if you're able to shovel all that food in your mouth, you can put some pills in there too. On the 11th of April, Chantel quit YouTube for the first time, shortly before chatting with our dear girl. Hi guys. Okay, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I honestly, if I'm being completely honest without any filter, I find the weight loss material boring. I'm not saying that I'm not going to continue to work on myself, um, but I probably will resort back to just counting calories and keeping a food journal. And stopping being a weight loss channel for essentially one day. And then uploading, of the six videos she uploaded afterwards, five mukbangs. None of which were appetizing in the slightest, and I'm sure they may have helped in what happened after, where she then made a video recognizing her fail. So on a serious note, and I know you're gonna, look, at this point, if I was a YouTube, I am a YouTube viewer, I wouldn't watch me either at this point, because I know I probably look absolutely insane, and you know what? I probably am. I just don't even, tr I feel so distant from my own brain. Skip ahead a little more to the 6th of May, and foodie beauty Chantal Marie quit YouTube again. Hey guys, sorry about the, the lighting and everything. Um, the sun is <laughs> very bright today. So this is not a clickbait video. Um, I am leaving YouTube. I have one more video to upload and that will be the last one. But then came back within a day with a new camera lens and a brand new diet. Hey guys. <laughs> So at this point, I know you probably think that I'm trolling you, and I promise that's not the case. Kind of had a tantrum. So that being said, I am going to take a, a little time away, um, maybe like a, a month or something like that. And I'm going to regroup and just really think of, uh, you know, study and how I can make better content for you guys. And a considerable amount of enthusiasm for the task at hand as she pursued the path of veganism. Salt and vinegar peanuts. Semi-sweet chocolate chips. They are they are certified vegan, gluten-free. So got some cumin. This is sesame oil. 100% buckwheat soba noodles. Buckwheat is very good for you. Now we addressed this in the first video where she tried to be a vegan. If you want to have a crack at a new diet, so be it. I'm not going to judge that. We are going to judge what happened while you were a vegan and what happened when you gave up being a vegan. Because let's face it, the video where you yourself admit to having no conviction is still up and you still quit this. Although I would say you approach this again from a fundamental misunderstanding of how to approach something as drastic as a vegan diet. Never mind. Rather than spend an entire lifetime on the remainder of the timeline so we're all caught up, I'm going to quickly reel off what all of them are with a brief clip to summarize. So, after coming back, stating why she was coming back and remodeling everything and not at the same time, Chantal went to Comic Con. How exciting. She admitted to obesity issues. So, one of the questions I get asked a lot is if I'm still vegan, and the answer is. Yes, I'm very proud of myself for sticking with this, and I really hope, um, I don't see that I will be going back to eating meat ever again. Three weeks later. Bacon cheeseburger with lettuce, ketchup, mustard, and pickles. Mm. I have a bacon non-cheeseburger. Went to the ER for a health scare, said sorry to Nico Cardo Avocado. I'm an idiot. I'm a complete impulsive idiot. So this video, I took down my orange chicken video discussing the Trisha Paytas and Nick Akato situation because, like the idiot I am, I didn't watch Nick Akato's video before making the commentary that I did. 
as a quick rundown for some context, Nico and Trisha Paytas had a little beef, because Trisha is scum. I will address that in greater detail when I do Nico Cardo. Chantal jumped on the bandwagon. Nico Cardo provided receipts. So Foodie Beauty deleted the video and issued an apology. Trisha Paytas is scum. I felt like I had to say it twice, because she's so dumb I had to count her that many times. Four weeks, by the way, and he's getting it. She's had two meltdowns, done nine mukbangs, quit mukbangs, started keto, and started uploading makeup unboxings. Essentially, when you really think about this, her timeline is more messed up than Flashpoint. Congratulations. So I'm not overly fond of altering my videos once I've edited them enough. Typically, these videos have about 100 layers to them. To move everything I need to move to be able to add this took an hour. So, there is an update to the timeline, the Flashpoint timeline, the Fractured timeline, where Chantal has done something, and I now have to call back on the first video I did, where I begged and pleaded with her not to strike me down. Because Chantal did go after someone. After somebody did a 30 minute response or reaction to a video of hers, she threatened to strike the YouTube underground. The pinned comment is no longer on that video. Well, Chantel then followed through with it. She did also put a community post up. I've got it on the screen now. She followed through with it. This understandably irked a considerable number of people who believed she might then start going after all the reaction channels. Channels like Zachary Michael and Michael B. Petty. But based on how well they've gone in the past, it is unlikely she'll do it again. I'm sure there are many reasons for this. Certainly behavioral ones lashing out is just common. Well, after an appeal was filed, Chantel, Foodie Beauty, Big Beautiful Me, retracted. I did retract it because I was getting threats and I just don't want to deal with that. Why the fuck you lying? This is getting stupid. Listen to me carefully, Big Beautiful Me. Try saying that with a straight face when you have a very serious point to make. Abusing the copyright system, like you have been doing and like you just did, worries a lot of people who make concerted efforts to make good content. It is also an insult to the terms of service that you agreed to. You know you agreed to them because you wouldn't have a channel if you didn't. This isn't like the Apple agreement you get every time you have an update. You end up scrolling through over a hundred thousand words of bump. No, this is simple. They updated it recently. I know they did because I got the email, which means you got it too. Don't abuse copyright because you can't take criticism. With this particular segment, I'm in a bit of a bind. The bind is that I don't want to say what my theory is at the end, in the sense that I want to prove it is something else. I really do. So I'm going to say what I have seen and gleaned from bits here and there, and we're going to try and either prove it or debunk it. Because I don't want to end up saying, and this is the hypothesis that I have been throwing about for a while, and many in fact have on virtually every single social media platform where you have a page dedicated to you, that you are in a loveless relationship born entirely out of convenience because you do not like to be alone. Okay, I mean, who here, raise your hand, has been horny and lonely after going to a bar and getting drunk? Which is part of the reason I'm, I'm afraid to be single. And Bebe requires a green card. This, of course, gets a little bit murkier when you add Pete into the mix, because you and Pete are remarkably in sync, which raises a number of questions about why you're with one and not the other, which we will certainly try and discuss in this segment as best as we can without insulting your relationship. Because I don't want to do that. I want to focus on the facts and Bebe's enthusiasm. Which you can see all the time when he's playing video games or doing those rather charming cooking videos with you. Ooh, spicy. Or your makeup. Like eyeliner here? Wherever you think it goes. BB, or to give him the name that Chantel blurted out in a video once. Uh, since I'm assuming I'll have kids with the man I'm with now, with Milan. Is from Senegal went to the open and welcoming land of Canada a few years ago for work. Works long hours, goes home to Foodie Beauty, or Big Beautiful Me, 
who many argue freeloads, which she can debunk by saying that she makes $5,000 a month. Since she mentioned 60k a year was passable, I guess she makes 60k a year. Congratulations. In the videos that BB does feature, which are sparse, there is an air of pushed into to keep up appearances. Now, I don't know if anyone knows what this means, but what I mean is, it's very forced and awkward, which doesn't necessarily mean he's pushed into it, but it does look like he's incredibly tired, probably from work, and doesn't want to be spending his time doing your makeup, cooking for you, or just talking, hanging out, which is where many believe that this is a loveless relationship based solely in the physical, which is where Pete comes in to fill in the emotional. I don't want to be saying that you two aren't together because you don't love each other, but what we see through the interactions in your videos, through the pictures you put on your now locked Instagram account, that is how it is perceived. And to continually push this keeping up appearances makes him look less like he is your boyfriend, fiance, husband or whatever, and more like an accessory, something you want to show off. Look what I got, which if anything then leads to questions on him of, why did you settle? But I'm not going to dawdle on that. I'd rather focus on your own delusions. When I was writing this video out, I had an idea, a suggestion for you, for a video perhaps, one that would maybe alleviate certain concerns that many have in the 1100 plus pages on you, on Kiwi Farms especially, as well as your fans and your haters, especially those that forced you to disable comments on your YouTube videos that are for your mental health, that's why, not because you couldn't take the criticism. The idea I had was that you two, when you're both ready, prepared, and emotionally invested in it, do a video together, answering the most pressing questions your supporters and fans have. Because you sometimes do reference green card. You do sometimes reference the haters because you are prone to obsessing over them to the point where you delete many videos where you address it. But that's okay, YouTube drama, the channel, has it archived meaning people can then see the rather awkward interaction that you don't want us to see, or the off-the-cuff remarks you make. So the idea of you two doing a video together, like a couple's video, similar to Amber and Becky, is actually a good idea. Or, and this is probably better overall for the sake of your relationship, you never mention it at all, ever, again. Because that would do more to protect what you have, if you believe it is love in the first place, than anything else. Because let's face it, you two could be in love. You two could be a very happy couple when the cameras are off and he's not playing video games. For all we know, behind closed doors or when the cap is on the lens, you two just cuddle up on the couch and talk. And if you do, fantastic. But what we see in the videos would paint a very different picture. A small part of me also wondered if perhaps he was stuck in the sense that he needs you as much as you need him. He needs you for that green card, which many do believe is the case. And you need him because while you're claiming to make 5000 a month, which I think is an absolute lie, you need him to help pay the bill so you don't go and live in Pete's car. And I say all of this after watching the now-deleted video from February of 2018, where you cited mental health concerns, physical health concerns, while saying at the same time that there are none, and possible surgery as reasons you can't get a real 9-to-5 job. You know, I get this a lot. You should work a nine to five job. I did have a job, remember? I couldn't do it mentally. Um, physically, it was hard. I'm not disabled, I'm not on disability. I can sit at a desk and do a job. I'm gonna get the surgery and I need to be off work for, I don't even know, I would need to be off work. Well, it's now June, 2019. I mean, you really could have worked the entire time. Most employers do grants leave you, especially for surgeries that are necessary, like the ones you used to list in the descriptions to all your videos, which were in fact the motivations for why you did anything at all. But I'm getting off topic, and I instead want to now move on to Pete, because there really isn't much I can say about BB, past the fact that everything about what you two do on camera reeks of being pushed, doesn't feel love, doesn't feel like there's anything there, which is where I get confused because of what I see with you and Pete. Okay, so actually before we jump into Pete, I should point out something of interest that does relate to Pete. Something you raised in a stream that I didn't know happened. 
You see on this screen here CXNT doing a lovely mukbang for me. I'm hoping the subtle hint and message from it is clear, along with all the others, of course. But she indicated to me that you'd streamed and you actually referenced the fact that you had never actually introduced Pete's and Bibi. And this sparked my curiosity. So I'm going to play the clip of what you said and then we're going to talk about that. Pete's never met Bibi. Might happen someday. And you guys don't know Bibi, like he's just, he's not a very expressive person. Like he's just kind of like that with everybody. Uh, no, I think Pete's is okay now. Bibi and Pete's, the meeting. Yeah, that would probably get a lot of views, <laughs> imagine. I'm just interjecting here briefly to point out something that does confirm an earlier suspicion about Bibi not wanting to be on camera in the first place. Also fair use. Yeah, BB, there's no way he just does not want to be on video at all. Like, he just seems really uncomfortable even taking family pictures. Okay, so after that utterly random interjection on this subject, let's get back on track as to why BB and Pete have not met, and perhaps delve further into that. I don't think they want to meet one another. It's like they're not jealous. I don't know. Like, BB, like, Pete has no interest in meeting BB at all. I don't think BB really wants to meet Pete either. I would surmise Pete's doesn't want to meet BB because then it's confirmation that it is over, indefinitely, absolutely, which is the impression I get. I could of course be wrong, Pete's please correct me if I am. And I don't think BB wants to meet Pete's because why does he want to meet somebody he used to date? That is obvious enough. You don't need any kind of psychic to work it out. Now let's talk about that, because and I'm going to be very honest here, I don't know a single couple that would be okay with this kind of dynamic. A dynamic where the ex has not met the current and the ex is essentially your support network. He is the guy you spend most of your time around when BB is at work, helping you film your videos. And I get it, there is a previous relationship there, of course, from prior to being a couple at school, when you, and I believe the exact words were, took pity on him. That's fine, I, I don't care. And I'll be honest, I'm sure there are many people that can make a friendship continue to exist after a breakup. Because it is possible, it really is, but it's not normal. In fact, it is highly irregular that the ex and the current don't ever meet. Now, I get BB doesn't care. He has no reason to care, really. Although I don't see how you're the prize. That doesn't matter. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, after all, and it's highly possible he has cataracts. My point is... It feels like an air of dishonesty, and I think it would do better for your relationship actually to have them meet. For all you know, BB and Pete's could become great friends. Now we should definitely now talk about Pete's. I'm not going to take shots at Pete's, I can't be bothered. I think we all know I don't have it in me to do that. Okay, except for that one video I did. But with Pete, it's quite interesting to me, because you two went to school together, you were close, you were both outcasts for reasons I don't care about. You became a couple, you lived together, you were together for a while, things didn't work out, but you somehow managed to keep a friendship, and he's now essentially your cameraman. Your mukbang co-staff when you eventually bring those back. Your producer, maybe. I don't know who edits your videos. It could be him, though. He is, based on everything you've said about him, apparently quite dependent on you, and so familiar with you, so comfortable with you, that he can just tolerate everything you do, which is really interesting. Because, and I will be truly honest here, I am struggling to understand how you two, after breaking up and you moving on, he is still a huge factor in your life. That's not to say it doesn't happen, only that under these circumstances I don't understand how you two manage to make it work the way you have. It is either a damning statement for the lack of emotion within the relationship you have with Bibi that you have to go back to your ex for that level of support, or a damning statement for how needy either or both of you are for one another. To the point you may as well consider yourself and to sci-fi nerds you'll get this a tyranid, a bug dependent on a hive mind. There isn't much I can say on your relationship with Pete's other than it makes me very uncomfortable. I was never able to quite pin why that was the case and I'll be honest, I don't understand. But I'll also say that as much as I don't want to admit it, my original hypothesis, I believe, is correct. And I don't want it to be correct. I want everyone to be happy. But that isn't always going to be the case now, is it? 
especially when we repeatedly dig holes for ourselves that we ourselves cannot get out of, to the point where we have to coexist under certain circumstances that are of our own doing, even if they are horrible. Now, before we get to the final segment, I'm now going to insert story time. We had this in the first video with Irate Bear. Well, he has very kindly agreed to come back for another short segment as Lord Bear about a rather amusing tale, which happens to coincide with the whole relationship aspect nicely. And I think it's a funny way to go out before we finish on a very short, direct point to Chantal. So take it away, Lord Bear. Uh, uh, for Cthulhu's sake, no bloody light again. Oh, Mercedes, Derek, turn the bloody lights on. We're supposed to be doing a fat video for the blue squid man thing. We have a whale to hunt. Derek, Derek, light on now. Oh, thank heavens! Please forgive the rude intro. We've been having some problems here on the Lord Bear Estate as of late. Low funding, indentured gardener Americans were captured by ICE. Still not sure what that is. Something about immigration? Hmm, whatever. Oh, and we have been under siege by a constant wave of chunky ladies, thinking they can get some of Lord Bear's peeing over my top hat. They've taken to sneaking through the bloody sewer lines, causing mass blockages and exploding lavatories. Speaking of brown explosions and morbidly obese deviants, Chantel, how are you, Shamu? It's been a while, or is it more moo than sham these days? <laughs> Foodie booty <coughs> for beauty has been taking part in some charity, helping the homeless. Let's take a look. So what I'm gonna eat is some cherry tomatoes, leftover macaroni salad, which I don't even know if it's still good. Oh, for heaven's sake, Chantel! Let's not pretend as if you aren't going to eat it! I'd like to know what you define as a salad! I noticed you have some battered chicken tendy looking pieces there. <laughs> you know you're not supposed to drench all of your food in that stuff, right? You do realize that's not a drink! You can't eat the bottle too, you know! My homeless lover. Sorry, what? What? Your homeless lover? You got down and dirtier with a homeless person? Instead of begging for change or food, surely he threw his bag of fries at you instead. You made sweet and sweaty love to a homeless man. Did he smell like kebab? Okay, I mean, who here, raise your hand, has been horny and lonely after going to a bar and getting drunk? Oh, don't we all, darling? We've all experienced that feeling. We've all been in that situation. Although I have to imagine that you'd be rather hungry. Me, which is part of the reason I'm, I'm afraid to be single. I know it has its benefits and everything, but whenever I was single, I was bitter because of those nights. You should be more concerned about dying, Chantel. You're not far off from having a cheeseburger-related heart attack, not being able to clean yourself correctly without having to construct some kind of scaffolding made from matchsticks. So basically, um, it was a night when I was going with this one girlfriend of mine to this local bar. Why do I get the feeling this was less of a bar with a band night and more of a pizzeria with children's animatronic singing robots? And a genuine question here. Is it possible that one's eyelids can gain weight? I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case with Chantel. Most storytime tellers tell about how they were stalked. I was the stalker. Probably not the best thing to do, Shamu. Admitting to a crime on a video while shoveling chicken down your throat. Are you even chewing, by the way? Also, as a side note, how does a fatty boom boom stalk anyway? The band, I was freaking out because we, as we were going in the bar, the band was walking in behind us and I was like, Oh my god, are you in the band? And the guy was like, one of the guys imitated me. He's like, oh my god, yes, I'm in the band. Cool story, bro. Then, you know, came around to the bar closing and I got that feeling like, I don't want to go home and I want to get laid, you know? Fun fact for you. When a fat person gets laid, it's actually called getting spread, like butter or lard. I decide, I'm like, I don't want to go home yet. But um, there's a lot of homeless people and stuff that hang out there, and uh, it's known to be dangerous. So I walked her home, 
And as I was coming back the same way, I was drunk, I was fearless. Homeless people have enough to deal with, Chantel. Living and sleep rough, struggling to find shelter, and begging for money to buy cheap, super unhealthy food. Uh, and let's be real, nobody's kidnapping a fat chick. Well, you say this, but if we were to drop you off in certain African nations, Ghana, maybe, I guarantee you, you'll have at least three or four gentlemen snap you right up. Yes, they'll expect you to take them home with them, but hey, semantics, am I right? As I'm walking home, I see this guy. He wasn't too scruffy looking, but he was kind of scruffy, you know? Ah, Chantel, ever the bargain hunter. And I come up to him, he's like, do you have a light? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure. And when I got to see him, he had a real, his name was Todd. We start talking and I was just like, I was attracted to him, you know? Chantel has a strong preference for scruffy pirated DVD salesmen. Imagine the Tinder profiles. Anyway, I didn't really care, I was just like, give me that D! You were happy with the gentle kissing, but are happy to get it on, on a hoofing rock? You know you could have taken him home, showered him, fed him, and then sat on him. It was a really gentle kisser. We found a rock, a big rock. Look at her, she's contemplating, she's remembering fondly. We do it, I mean, I don't know what you're thinking, what did he smell like? Oh, trust me, I'm far more concerned about what you smell like. He didn't smell too homeless, like, you know, he smelled a little, little, little bit like malt vinegar, but I think it was coming from his feet and not his privates. Chantel, you are certainly a character, I will give you that, but, uh, I really hope neither of your parents watch your videos. I'm sure mummy and daddy will be super proud how their daughter mated with a homeless man. But either way, I would say this has been a pleasure, but alas, I feel a little bit queasy, if I'm honest. But thank you for having me, dear Omegon. I'm off to see how much money I can make pimping this armada of fat ladies trying to get into my home via the piping. Cheerio! For this final part, I don't need any of your content, because this, what I'm about to say, is well established. It is known because you have done it multiple times, not the copyright. That's something else entirely, and we've covered it twice now. No, this is the inability to heed your own advice that you would happily give others. And I'm sure many of you are now thinking, how is this a segment? Well, I'm glad many of you didn't ask, because I think it is one of the worst qualities of a person when they would sit in front of a camera and tell others how to better themselves when they themselves contradict it in their own life through their own actions. Now I get it, personal choice is very important. We all should be free to do, think, say whatever we want, even if that makes us a ginormous hypocrite. As an example, I'm going to tell you what I used to live my life by, so that you, Chantal Marie, foodie beauty, I'm not saying the other one because I can't be bothered to animate my avatar to go round again, can better understand why I think this is truly sad. The way I have always lived my life is that if you could not afford to look after yourself, you don't get pets. If you can't afford to look after yourself, do not place the burden onto another person who then has to look after you, exhausting their resources and their patience. I don't know whether you have yet to get to the stage where you require assistance with certain tasks. It is possible you do require some, but I'm not going to pry. It is not my business. And in truth, the Dingleberry thing is still embossed in my skull. The point is, you've given out advice to people like Amberlynn Reed, telling her what she should do to fix herself. I've done the same for you. Difference is, that very advice I could follow. And back to my own little anecdote, I waited until I was finally out of debt before I put myself out there because to me that seems to be what any good responsible person would want to do. Yes, there are many people who manage to get around that and are happy to be there for each other because. However, the advice you give is mostly diet-based and how to handle the <clears throat> haters and you yourself are a hypocrite in dealing with it because you block all comments. I think we're actually done with this because honestly I can't think of anything else I'd want to add to it. There is a psychology behind it that truly fascinates me but I want to keep this video around 40 minutes at most. This is, as far as I'm concerned, the final time I intend to address you. I don't see a reason to come back. So thank you all very much for the support to get me this far. I appreciate it beyond belief. And as a final thing, 
I promised that Nico Cardo Avocado would be next at the end of the first Foodie Beauty video. Well, now he is next, because Amberlynn Reed is done, and so is Foodie Beauty. I can't think of a reason to come back to you, unless you did a response video. If you do that, I think uh, I'll have some fun with you. But otherwise, nah. And I'm not begging it either, by the way. Just saying, I might respond to you. Maybe, if I can be bothered. Just as a final point for the entire Foodie Beauty series, because the relationship stuff really did vex me, I wanted to say that in every relationship there is a Reacher and a Settler. Now I can't work out who the Reacher is in this relationship, but I do know who the Settler is. Make of that whatever you will.